Welcome back friends. In this video tutorial, we'll be talking about Hershey and Chase experiment, which is one of the groundbreaking experiment in the history of molecular biology to prove that DNA is the genetic material and this is the material which is transferred from one person to another person and it carries the information throughout the generation. So let's talk about the experiment. Actually, the experiment is very simple, but it's very much clever at that time to be executed. Now, in this experiment, before going into the details, I want to tell you some important facts that actually, uh, normally there are bacteriophages. I hope you know all. The bacteriophages are viruses that can infect bacteria. Now, in this case, we know that E. coli is a bacterial cell and there are some phage viruses that can infect E. coli. An example is T2 bacteriophage. Now, this T2 bacteriophage will infect E. coli. Now, in this case of Hershey and Chase experiment, they use those T2 phage and they infect those E. coli cells using the T2 phage, right? And to see, because normally what happens uh, for the viral life cycle, that if this is a bacterial cell, the virus will come, come and the virus will sit here. Let's say this is the T2 phage virus like this, it will sit and finally ultimately they will produce more and more copies of this uh, same type of virus by staying inside the E. coli cell because they require the host cell for their development. So they use this particular theory and this modified some different kind of situation and they get a result. Now what is it? What they did here normally this T2 phage or the phage uh, viruses that they knew are actually made up with two important segments. One is nucleic acid, another is protein. So that's very important because that's why they choose viruses and bacteriophage viruses uh, especially. Because these phage viruses are having only two important macromolecules. One nucleic acid and one proteins. That's it. Nothing more. Very simple structure. So the components here are coming nucleic acid and proteins. Right? So they want to find out whether nucleic acid is the genetic material or proteins. Now previously people thought always that protein might be the genetic material because protein is involved in kind of almost everything so it should it can be a kind of genetic material responsible for the transfer of genetic information so to prove that whether protein is or not they take it and in this case they knew that uh, normally the phage virus is placed onto the bacteria and they just inject their genetic material inside that was known that time and it is very important that this thing is known. That they knew that they see they transfer their genetic material inside the bacterial cell. Then they come out by assembling and producing proteins inside. Right? And protein code that is remaining, that is, it will remove and it will go away. So this is the thing. Ba bacterial cell is there. Phage will enter. Phage, phage, total phage virus won't enter. It will only inject its genetic material inside the bacteria. And the rest of the protein body will fall off. That's the particular process. So what they did here, they pro process uh, their, this, this structure of phage virus and they tag radioactive probe to this protein coat as well as to the gene sequence or to the genetic element of the virus. So two coat, one for this uh, radioactive coat for the protein component of the phage, another one is for the genetic component of the phage. So in this case, the genetic material is having phosphorus in it. Remember, because uh, it is a phosphodiester bond that is getting this DNA structure compactness. So DNA uh, or the genetic material, so two things are there. Genetic material, it is having phosphorus. And the second thing is protein coat. And it is having sulfur. Remember proteins can have sulfur, not all of them are have, having sulfur but cysteine and theonine they are having those kind of sulfur. So, so these are the things. So what they are coating, they are tagging radioactive probe with this protein as well as genetic material. They, they tag genetic material with P32 type of isotope of phosphorus and for protein coating they level it by sulfur 35 type or isotope for sulfur. Now, why they choose sulfur and phosphorus? Because phosphorus is only present in DNA, but no trace of phosphorus is in protein. And similarly, no trace of sulfur is there in the genetic material. So there is no way for blending things down. That's why they choose completely separate do those two things. So once they choose them, they uh, normally what they did, first they infect their E. coli cells. 
So the first step for their process is to infect the E. coli cells. So if this is the E. coli cell, they, they just infect those E. coli cells by phages. And after that, they actually infect one E. coli cell with multiple phages. Then what they, they take this sample and they put it into a mixture. And yeah, inside there, they put it. And here, in two different chambers, they put two different things, actually. Right? So in this chamber, they filled it with P32. In this chamber, they filled it with sulfur 35. Right? And then, they go through a centrifugation process. So let me write a centrifugation. Centrifugation was performed. After, after leaving it for several hours there, infection is kind of complete, they go for a centrifugation. And once the centrifugation is done, two things are always present in centrifugation. One is supernatant, another one is pellet. Supernatant carries the smaller unit particles and pellet, in pellet, larger weight containing molecules settles down. So in both the case, they get the pellet and the supernatant. Now in the pellet region, in this case, in this case of in both this in both this area what they took they take this pellet region and normally it's the idea if we uh, make this centrifugation in both this situation cells will settle down and those protein coat of phage will come up in the soup right so according to this law they knew that yes in the soup there are protein coats present but here in this pellet there are bacterial cells present right so they take both of these things, this soup and this pellet, and similarly this soup and this pellet. Now what they watched uh, or noticed this in this case, that here, where they tagged this, this P32 in this case, right? So tag it with P32, and in this, so, so the tag here always go to genetic material, right? So now they find this, and, and in this case from this tube, they try to find from where they are getting this radio level or radioactivity, right? And they are getting the radioactivity. So from, from both of them, soup and this pellet, they are getting the radioactivity from, in this case, they are getting the radioactivity from pellet. Similarly, in this case of S35, they are getting it from, the radioactivity they are getting it from the soup. So in this case, when they tag P32, that means when they are tagging genetic material, right, because genetic material was tagged with P32, they are getting this radioactivity from pellet. And where they are leveling with S35, they are getting it for soup, right. So remember, when they are tagging again P32, they are coming it from pellet. And they knew that pellet obviously contains cells or bacterial cells. And the soup obviously contains virus coat and we remember virus coat is nothing but the protein and it is not having any nucleic acid so where does the nucleic acid go nucleic acid goes to these cells because previously when we tag these viruses we the tag these viruses the dna material always present inside this viral coat so according to the law, law it should be present in the soup, but it is not present in the soup because the radioactivity is coming from the pellet and pellet is having the cells. So now we can tell that those genetic materials are present in the cells. So previously it was in the protein coat, but now it, they are present in the cells. So definitely that this material or this genetic material is moving from virus inside the cell. Right? And then what they did they took these cells and they leave it for certain uh, times and they just put this and streak a plate using this cell and they get progeny viruses. And all of those progeny viruses are having the radioactivity. That means this is the genetic material is the actual thing. The genetic material is the material which is transferring from generation to generation and that is uh, the actual element, right? So that's that's how they proved it, right? So it's, it might seem complicated, but this is the actual idea. The experiment, the foundation of the experiment, the idea is kind of same. It's very simple. 
that they we need to check whether the radioactivity is coming from the pellet or the soup. Now after tagging it with phosphorus, if it is coming from the pellet, that means the material is moved. It is going inside the uh, bacterial cell. And what goes inside the bacterial cell? DNA. So DNA is the thing which is transferring. Because we haven't found this kind of uh, radioactivity from the supernatin region, right? So that's that's the experiment of Hershey and Chase, guys. It's a groundbreaking experiment to prove that DNA is a genetic element. So that's it. Thank you.